All right, I think we can get started. So I'm just going to pass it over to Erin Bigger with Beaver Polite slash Ever Schools. <laughs> Hello. Thanks, everyone, for joining me. I see there's a time remaining. Is that all the time that we have for this, Krista? Like up in the right hand corner, I see the remaining 27 minutes. Is that right? No. Or are we have 55 minute session. We'll have 55 minutes. Yeah. Perfect. I'm like, oh, we are going fast, guys. Yeah. <laughs> I'll okay, get good. Screen sharing just one sec. Perfect, thank you. So as Krista um, said, my name is Erin. I'm with Ever After School um, and Be Fit for Life. So in I'm in Medicine Hat actually. So our Be Fit for Life Center, we've partnered with Ever After School. So I'm happy to be here today uh, representing, I guess, both. Where I'm a little bit of both. So anyways, um, you are, yeah, I'm in Medicine Hat. I'm assuming you guys are all in Edmonton and area, um, but hopefully we're all doing well. We are gonna get up and play some games today. Um, we're going to do some, like, I'll go through some stuff, um, more lecture style, and then I'm also, we're going to play games, and I'm going to break it up, so we kind of get moving, because I know it's end of the day, and on day two, so we probably want to move a little bit. Am I right? Are we all okay to move? We all kind of have space, and do what you can, so that is all good. Um, perfect. Thank you for sharing it for me, Krista, <laughs> so that, um, yeah, anyways, that makes it much easier for me to go. So Krista is sharing my the presentation for me. Thank you very much. I will be the one um, speaking on it. So yeah, so we're gonna do move and play. Um, I have like a little handy dandy little booklet here and it's filled with all sorts of games, all move and play, um, which was created by Be Fit for Life. But some of the things I'm gonna use are also ever active games as well. So um, we will go through, um, Perfect. No, you're all good, Krista. Thank you. I appreciate you doing that for me. Need to adjust. Check your options. Yep. I do that. Pardon me. I just had to close the room so that we could actually give you the full 55 minutes instead of 30. So I am going to pop you guys in one more time. Bear with me. And we are opening them back up. I kept losing my mouse too. Um, I know that's just what happens when you share your screen. I was like, maybe I pressed the wrong button. <laughs> no, I, I do that too. So that's why I'm like, I cannot speak and try to find a mouse at the same time. So that's why I gave it over to you, Krista. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, if I don't say any more words, it's because I'm going to keep myself on mute. I don't know what the dogs are going to do. So perfect. Thank you. Okay. So let's, we will get started anyways with uh with our presentation it's always so weird and all it's like you feel like like cyberspace just like sucks you out and puts you somewhere else but i'm glad that we're all we're all back together um the objectives for my little session here so we're going to introduce some physical literacy fundamental movement skills explore why they are key to lifelong participation in physical activity we're going to do uh, like i said introduce move and play um games through physical literacy concepts how to build intentional quality physical act um, activity programming and strategies for modifying games we will add to the end as well because those always come up you can be like this game isn't working and i can give you some strategies of how to make things maybe work so we'll go through that so i think we're going to start with an activity with our let's warm up so there's two posters there as you can see the one on the left that has the three columns is much um more simple it's if you I would stick with that one. That's the one that I use 95% um, of the time. The one on the right is if you have older children, um, older kids, youth, um, anywhere from, I would say 13 and up. The one on the right is, is good. And it's actually, they have more basketball drills, but they just add in a different, um, the balance component in there. So it's just more advanced movements for the older children, if that makes sense. So anyways, we are going to get up and we are going to warm up if everybody is okay with that. You can do, um, this is just a poster. Um, all of our, re or not all of them, most of the resources I'm showing you today too are free downloadable resources from our website. Um, so we will add those in, uh, but this is one of them. Um, some of them are not free downloadable, so pens and paper and mark them down if you like them. Anyways, so I'm going to do this one as in, I will choose... I'll choose the first round. We're going to do two rounds. I'll choose the first round, one of those activities from each one. And then the second round, I'll make it a free for all and you guys can all choose your own. So if you're in that group setting with the kids, you could say, okay, everybody choose one, do it for X amount of time and then switch. Um, 
but sometimes if especially if they're so young because sometimes they just him and haw and they don't really want to make a choice so you can make the choice for them so um i will make the first choice and then second round will be up to you guys um i always like let's start with bum kicks so as you can see the healthy heart so we have healthy hearts so it's the cardio dynamic movements and then stability movements so we're gonna do bum kicks and for those that don't know how oh my god chris is getting started already okay i'm gonna join you too so bum kicks look like this yeah exactly trying to kick our bum of course you can um kind of cue it for the for the kiddos standing up tall trying to bring that heel to the bum just like they're running in place almost okay we are going to move on to the next and we're going to do toe toe taps so you can tell them opposite hand to foot if they're really young they might not have that they might want to do same hand to foot and that's okay modification is also a knee up so any one of those and then we're going to balance and we're going to balance in the airplane see if you can hold it 20 seconds or so younger kids even 10 seconds and then ask them to switch because we all start with our dominant leg and then we're going to switch awesome next round you get to choose so i want you to choose one from the healthy heart section one of those movements and go i'm going to hop but i realize i need something else over here luckily everything is right in my basement so whatever we do to one side we always pick our our dominant side so I'm hopping, then I'm gonna go, okay, everybody switch, switch feet. So we make sure that we kind of keep that balanced as much as possible. Okay, we're gonna move to the dynamic movement, whichever one you'd like there. Take a look. I'm gonna go with jumping jacks, keeping it simple today. Kudos to anybody doing this Spider-Man crawl, by the way. Okay, on to the balance, and I always love the three point balance. So it's any three limbs on the ground, bring them up. But pick whichever one you like. And then, of course, we switch to the other side. And the three point balance can also be two hands and just one foot. So I often get the kids to explore what movement feels best, what feels most natural, and just bringing in that body awareness component. You guys are all on mute. I can't hear if you're deep breathing, but you can hear that I am. Oh, okay. So that is the warm up poster. So really you can do as many rounds as you like. Like I said, you can tell the kids, okay, five minutes, see how many of those you can do. Lots of ways to use the poster but you kind of get the gist. Does anybody have questions on what any of those movements are? Because I know some of them might be like, well, what is the Spider-Man crawl? So if anybody has questions, let me know. Cause I can, I can show you, I can show you what those are. And if not, we will, we will carry on. All right, we will carry on. Ah, oh, now that our heart rates are up, I think I have some learning for us to do. Do you have the next screen, Krista, please? Thank you. Oh, okay, good. We're gonna do some learning. Um, are you guys familiar with the 24 hour movement guideline of how many hours we need activity, how many hours we need to sweat, sleep, sit? Okay, so that is where I got this from. So you can um, Google 24 hour movement guideline and it shows it for every age group that there is of how much we need of what, what we need in 24 hours. So for the age group that you guys will be working with, so that five to 17 years, they've kind of clumped them together. The sweat category is that moderate to vigorous activity. So how we are now, our heart rates are elevated, where we can get in some, some sweat. We need to accumulate, and now that's the secret word here, is to accumulate 60 minutes per day of that age group from ages five to 17. So that can be in 10 minute bouts, that can be in half an hour bouts, but throughout the day, uh, we we try to aim for 60 minutes. Um, that's not going to be all all on you if you're running in a summer camp or whatever that might be. 
because it's also home time, right? Um, time at home needs to be also added into that, but majority of that, well, is during the day, right? So yeah, we want to get in about 60 minutes of cumulative um, per day for that age group. Step is just your light activities. Maybe we're going for a walk, maybe we're standing, washing the dishes. That's kind of when we are upright and moving is that step. We're folding laundry. <laughs> yeah, um, if you're my age and have kids that go through endless amounts of laundry. Um, sleep, now this one is super important. Uninterrupted nine to 11 hours of sleep per night for kids aged five to 13. Eight to 10, um, yeah, eight to 10 hours for ages 14 to 17. And then just having, trying to have consistent wake up times, bedtimes. Um, I know that's not gonna be applicable, but it's just, it's good to kind of know how many hours we all need or how many hours the kids need. And then even just being able to suggest that sometimes um, sitting at no more than two hours a day of like recreational screen time. So movie time, iPad time, whatever that might be. Um, so it's a lot less than we think. <laughs> So yeah, so that's kind of the ideal world. If you want to look it up uh, for adults, we want to accumulate 150 minutes per week of activity. So just a little side note. All right, we, we will go on to the next one. Or do you guys, is everybody okay copying that down? I see some of you writing. Are we all good? So really we're trying to get 60 minutes of that vigorous activity. That's gonna be your running, jumping. When the kids are playing tag, they're playing color monster. Um, they're just, they're getting that heart rate up. We're trying to accumulate 60 minutes a day is I think the main point of this. All right, we will carry on. The next slide, please. I know you're trying, you can't see your mouse, can you? No, I know it's so frustrating. Anybody else have that <laughs> when they're doing um, presentations? I can't even move it over. It just keeps giving me that. Do you hear that? Yes. It won't let me do can it. You use your, can you use your arrow buttons on your keyboard? That is my arrow. Oh, that is your arrow button that I'm hearing. Okay. Physical, there we go. So physical literacy, um, somewhat of a new term. I don't know if anybody is familiar. Like, have you heard the word physical literacy? We're so used to, I think, physical activity or physical fitness. Um, physical literacy, I think, is being more normal now and, and using using that terminology so it is the motivation confidence physical competence knowledge and understanding to value and take responsibility which is a key point take responsibility for engagement in physical activities for life um, it is something like how we read and write for life uh, we want people to be physically literate for life as well and to carry on these basic skills um, for the whole for their whole lives and it is kind of a continuum spectrum um, we don't always go, oh, I'm super fit and I'm active all the time, I'm, I'm up here, because life happens, right? And it's just like, oh yeah, yeah, I'm getting there. And then, you know, maybe we get an injury or maybe we have an illness or something happens and then our physical activity might drop. So it is a continuum journey of uh, physical literacy, but that is the definition of, of it. You'll see lots of different kinds of definitions, but that was the one that was decided upon in 2014. Um, we're gonna go more in depth of those components so the elements of physical literacy, motivation and confidence, physical competence, knowledge and understanding, and engagement in physical activities for life. So those are the key um, elements to them. And I know you might be wondering like, well, what's the difference between, well, what I think when I see this is what's the difference between physical competence and knowledge and understanding. So knowledge and understanding is going, oh, I understand how to play that game. We're gonna play tag and I know how to play that one. So that's your knowledge understanding. The physical competence is actually being able to have the ability to run, the ability to maybe dodge, to tag. That is more of the skill level is the physical competence, actually being able to physically do it. Uh, we'll go into that more into the next slide as well. So has anybody seen this chart before? No? Okay. Um, so as you see, this is just something to be mindful of. Um, when we engage in games or activities with really anybody, any age, we are engaged, and you can even think of this for yourself, you are engaged when you are motivated, when you feel confident, when you are physically competent, so I know that my body knows how to do that, um, I have the skills, and I understand the game, right? So when we have all those four, we are engaged, we want to play, this seems like fun, and I know I can do it. We will have apathy when we're missing motivation. So we don't really want to play. We, we have the confidence. I know how to play. I know I have the skill level to play, 
and I have, um, I understand the game, but I'm not motivated, we will have apathy. When we're missing confidence, we will get anxiety. So I'm motivated, I really wanna play. I have the skills to do it. I understand it, but I think I'm not good at it. That's when we will have anxiety. So you might even identify that um, in children or in anything, any game that you play with, and you can see that, you can then know, okay, this is gonna be a confidence issue. Um, they just don't have the confidence to do that. When we don't have the physical competence, when we don't have that skill level, is when we will feel frustrated, right? And you'll see that with kids where they just, they don't know how to swing a bat. So asking them to play baseball is very frustrating to them because they don't know how, right? Um, and lastly, confusion is when I am motivated, I am confident, I've got all the skills in the world, but I don't know what we're playing. I don't understand the rules to this game means I'm confused, right? <laughs> so just being aware of when you see these different feelings or different behaviors come out of what that might be and how to fill in those kind of components, right? Of what might be missing um, in this, just so we can kind of try to include everybody as best we can. Um, okay, we'll go on to the next one because I feel like it's a game. Yeah, because I was like, I'm gonna talk lots now. So now we're onto this. Fundamental movement skills. This is also a poster on our website. Um, and we have actually quite a bit of resources around this. We have lesson plans based on this poster alone. Um, there's a lot of resources based on this. It goes into three categories, much like our warm up poster. So the stability skills, locomotor skills, object manipulation, sorry, manipulate. Yeah, I'm going to ask you to read that skills. <laughs> I was just at an, at an FMS course this morning too. Um, anyways, so that's what those are. So your stability, your balance, um, locomotor skills, how do I get from A to B, right? And then object manipulative skills, oh, nailed it, is how, like, can you throw a ball? Can you kick a ball? Can you catch a ball? Can you set a ball? That sort of thing, right? It doesn't always have to be a ball. Hockey stick, hockey puck, you know, whatever it is. Um, so that's, I just wanted to kind of go over what those fundamental skills are. Because sometimes, especially at the younger ages, they just don't have them yet. They don't have that development yet. So working on those basic skills so that we can progress um, into the, you know, more dynamic, complex kind of skills as we age. And again, that's that physical literacy, right? Over lifetime. So what can I start with now? It's building that foundation so that we can continue on and play games and have more fun when we know how to jump or how to hop or, you um, by the way, side note, jump is means you jump on two feet, a hop is on one foot. <laughs> Little side pet peeve. <laughs> okay, so that kind of goes over that poster and that's such an easy one too. You can print out that poster, have it up and ask the kids, okay, try one of these ones or let's try these ones or maybe have them all demonstrate um, a different skill and just to work on those that way. We will carry on. I won't make us do these ones yet because ah, it's lucky seven's time. So lucky sevens are an actual deck of cards. Lucky sevens. Okay, so these I love. They are in the same kind of categories as our warm-up poster. So the hearts are the healthy hearts, right? Like the heart, the suit of hearts, um, healthy hearts. So there's all different kinds of cards that you choose from. The diamonds are dynamic diamonds, right? So those are the dynamic movements spades we call them stability spades and then the clubs are like wild cards um so you can add in a club at any point with the other suits and be like hey we're going to do that movement but i don't know if you can see that it says robot so we're going to do this one like a robot or it might say you're going to do it this one says rewind you're going to do it backwards um so the clubs are like wild cards we're going to play a round of lucky sevens if uh if you can indulge me please so get on up again, make sure you've got a bit of a space around you. And let's see. So usually with these ones, you can have the kids, um, if they want to pick cards, just kind of gives you ideas of how to get moving. Oh, this one is fun that I never ever do. Gallop, let's gallop. So you can gallop in the spot. Kids love to run free. They love a lot of space. So if you have the space to let them gallop, but we're going to gallop because that's always a fun one. So. If you can, I know this is what I do for a living. I just get to gallop and play games all the time. So thank you for indulging me. 
So we're going to gallop and then I'm actually going to pick another healthy heart right away and we're going to jump for distance. If you have the space, if you don't have the space where you're at, I ask that you jump for height. Okay. So if we jump for distance, we can cue that we have to load ourselves first. We squat down, swing our arms back, and then our arms can drive us forward. So let's see how far we can jump and land and making sure that we have a bent knee when we land. Oh, now that I made us tired, our dynamic um, diamonds oh, is a skier jump. So we're gonna pretend that we are skiing and we go side to side. Again, swinging the arms. Knees and feet kind of stay side by side and we just jump side to side. <sighs> okay, I'm gonna pick another dynamic diamond. Don't worry, it's not a burpee because I just bypassed that one. Let's do this one, stork to stand or squat to stork. I'll show you. So you're just gonna squat down, come up, balance one foot. Squat, balance, you can add the arms up top if you want and go at your own pace. Squat to stork. Oh. All right, I'm gonna move on to the stability spades. We already did airplane balance. Plank, ooh, kids are really good at this one. The crab walk. So if we can do a crab position, kind of like our three-point balance before, but now we're gonna try to walk. And I always find it interesting to see if people automatically walk forwards or backwards. And which one do you find easiest? Because I find going backwards easiest. <sighs> okay, now I'm going to give you two options for the second one, because some of you might just not, might not like it. Okay, so your second one is either a tree pose, tree balance, or if you want a cross-legged stand up, sit down, one. So do which one you like. So either a tree balance and then try from both feet or a cross-legged sit down, stand up. Bear with me. Let's see if you're cross doing this one. Oh my goodness. Sometimes it works. And then you gotta try both legs. So even if you're doing the tree pose, try both legs. If you're doing the cross-legged stand up, sit down. Oh my goodness, I am out of practice. <sighs> okay, so you guys can get the idea of Lucky Seven's cards. I didn't throw in any wild cards. I was kind. You're all just meeting me for the first time, so we won't do that. Although I do love to pull out, do it like a robot, because it's so interesting to always see what people's interpretation of a robot is, because mine's always this, always. That's my go-to, my one robot move. <laughs> That's all I got. Oh, okay, catch your breath. Oh, Krista, I saw that. I saw that, that was skills. Okay, we will move on, catch your breath, grab some water. This game I'm gonna tell you about, this one you might wanna jot down because it's not a free downloadable resource. It's one that's in like my little booklet of fun here. It is Builders and Bulldozers. I play this one all quite a bit. I teach um, youth voice, like a voice program and a girls program, goes over so well. So what it is, is that you um, separate the team. One team is builders, one team is bulldozers, and you can call them whatever you want. Um, you can be creative with the name. So the builders take cones or like pylons and they set them up randomly in your space. So whether you're outside in a field or you're in a gym, randomly they put cones up. Your bulldozers, have to come and knock them over. So it's a constant game of cleanup pretty well. Um, mom life. <laughs> Actually, now that I think about it, I'm like, this is my mom life. So <laughs> your bulldozers come, knock them over. Builders have to go back up and build them up. So there's never an end. You kind of end it when you run out of time. 
um, because it's a constant cycle, right? Um, things that we can add into this though is the locomotive skill. So instead of now running in the space, everybody has to hop or everybody has to, so hopping is the one foot. So we all have to hop on one foot. Everybody has to jump. Um, we're all gonna walk like bears. So even if we're knocking it over, maybe this time the bulldozers can't use their feet, they can only use their hands, things like that. So you can change up the locomotor skills to make it more challenging or easier, depending on your group or if they're bored with it, then say, well, let's do it more challenging then, right? Um, anyways, and try and even if you're on that hop one foot, you have to also bend over on one foot to put them back up. And you have to bend over on one foot to knock it down, right? So you can't use your feet then either way. So just trying to find ways to make it challenging. Um, scope out your group and see what they're like or where, where they're at. But just, yeah, try to mix, mix that one up. The kids go crazy with that. And then of course you swap. So then bulldozers become builders, builders become bulldozers and have them reverse that role. And again, just, you know, kind of time it, give them five minutes each or two minutes each, they get tired out fast <laughs> because they are constantly clean up mode or they're constantly demolition mode. So that's a fun, fast game. And it doesn't take much equipment, just some pylons and your open space. So yeah, any questions on that one? Did we catch our breath enough to play another game with me? This one, um, when I was first introduced to this game, I wasn't sure how it would go over, but I must say it is a favorite. I get asked to play this one all the time. So we are gonna pretend that your space is a ship. We are all pirates, our matey. Um, I don't use the terms, the boaster and port and starboard because there's not enough space in here for that. If you guys have that kind of mental space, please feel free. I, I say front, back, left, right. So you'd all decide which is the front of the boat, what's the back, right? So you got the front and then from there you get your bearings. If you want, if you're kind of seeing the same kids over and over again, and you want to start adding in the other terminology, please feel free to do so. Um, I just say front, back, left, right. Uh, if you yell out, scrub the decks, the kids get on their hands and knees and they pretend to scrub the floors. Climb the ringings, we pretend to climb a rope. If I say, captain aboard, we all go, aye, aye, captain. Uh, peg leg gym means we hop on one leg. Sharks is, um, we kind of hop in like a V-sit is what I would call it, like on your bum, and you come up in a V-sit. Uh, walk the plank, we really are, here, hopefully you can see me. We pretend that we're walking the plank, so heel toe, heel toe walk, like a balance walk. So four or five steps, then we jump into the water. And then lifeboat is you get the kids to line up. Um, so they would just get into like a group, two, three, whatever it is, and they row, they pretend to row on the floor. It's again, a quick game. You're, you're the one calling out, so you set the pace of this game, um, but the kids love it. Especially when you go left and they go, no, 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 right. And they're like, and they got changed direction. and. It works on so many of those fundamental movement skills without them realizing that they're working on it. So do you guys want to play It's a Pirate Life for me? Okay. Okay, I hope so. If not, I mean, that's okay too, but let's play. Okay, so decide in your own space, what is front? And then from there, you can figure out right, left, and back. Does that make sense? Okay, I'm gonna to play too. So, oh, I will say this. When you play, you can also, um, I usually, if you, especially if you're big gym, I usually will use running as my way to play the game. If it's a smaller space or they just want a different mix up, you can say, okay, now we're only skipping. Now we're only galloping and it's no longer running from space to space. So you can change up the movement skill. Does that make sense? I hope so. I realize that you're all on mute and I keep saying, does that make sense? And nobody can, <laughs> sorry. I'm so used to conversations. So let's do that. So decide which way is front and we're gonna move to the front. And then we're gonna go right. Let's go left. Scrub the decks. Oh, climb the riggins. Captain aboard. Aye, aye, Captain, walk the plank. Oh, run to the back. 
Run to the left. Big leg jump. Uh, sharks. Uh oh, sharks. So that's that B sit. We're going to come up. <laughs> Scrub the decks. Climb the riggins. Lifeboat. We don't have groups, but we'll just pretend to row on our own. Oh, let's go to the right. Let's go to the front. Let's go to the back. Pig like Jim. Oh, Captain aboard. Aye, aye, Captain. Off to the left. To the back. Climb the riggins. Scrub the decks. Eek, sharks. Okay, how are we doing? Good? Okay, grab your water again. As you can see, it could be a lot of fun. <laughs> or at least I'm hoping that you think that's a lot of fun. This is the one too, I'll give you a second if you haven't already to write, write some of them down um, because this one isn't um, one of our resources, so. I'm sharing it with you because I love this game and the kids love this game. And you can see how, how um, quick you can make it. You can also, I've played it where it was opposite day. So when I said front, I meant back. When I said left, I meant right. And then it really got our, the kids thinking. Um, this is also a game I have played virtually when I've had to go virtual. So that one's gone out quite well. Um, the other, I don't have it on here, but is one called, you could call it life jackets. And then the kids have to partner up, go back to back and interlink their arms and pretend that their friend is their life jacket. So lots of things that you can think of with this. Um, yeah, yeah. So different movement types and um, yeah, different movements, different directions that you want to do opposite day. And if you think of anything else to kind of add to make that fun, but especially when you go scrub the decks, climb the riggings, oh, scrub the decks, climb the riggings, then you can tucker some of them out pretty quick. <laughs> pretty good that way, or yourself, as I, I often do as well. So, um, oh, okay. Um, any questions on that? I feel like we're flying through these games, you guys. Any questions? No? You can put it in the chat or you can unmute if you'd like. Are we good? All right, we'll carry on. Sorry, I'm scrolling through. I wish I could see everybody, right? All at the same time. Flip flop. Okay, this one is also in my little book of tricks here. So pretty easy concept. You have um, two teams, one are the flip floppers, and what are the movers? So I'll demonstrate this game because this isn't one that we can play virtually. Um, this is great uh, indoor space, outdoor space. Um, anyways, either, either one, this one works very well. So the flip floppers really do move between like um, a plank or a downward dog position to a bridge position. I'll show you. So can you see me here? Okay. So if you're a flip flopper, you go flip, somebody would run underneath you or crawl underneath you, the movers. And then once they crawl underneath you, you have to flop. Now somebody would jump over you or step over you. Then you're back to a flip. And then you're back to a flop. And then back to a flip. Does that make sense? So when you're in that, I always tell the kids, you go for their belly. <laughs> so if they're down, crawl underneath and then if they're up you step or jump over top and of course you can lower yourself down if you need to I've played this game with adults and there are some that I just some men were just too big they were too tall and I don't trust my jumping skills and I just kind of hopped over their feet so modify this one as you need I do suggest it does say after one or two minutes switch the roles because when I played this game the first time, I made the mistake of going way too long. 
<laughs> way too long. So it really is as, as a flip flopper, it's, it's very tiring. Um, so flip the rolls and then you can do that cycle a few times. Um, even the movers, cause they have to crawl underneath and then they have to jump over top or walk over top. It's exhausting on both parts, but a lot of fun. The kids really like this one too. Any question on flip floppers? No, that's okay. No, no, you're good, Krista. You're right on that. Next up is fitness dice. I do this one all the time. Um, I, I go to preschools quite a bit. So I'll show you on the next page. We won't go there yet. Um, there's one called movement dice. See, I even laminate them because I bring them with me. Can you hear the, the laminating paper? We're first, we are going to play around a fitness dice. So I have um, a huge dice from the dollar store that's foamy and bounces a ton and kids love it. Um, well, whatever kind of dice, if you have dice, um, you could also pick numbers just randomly ask different, you know, kids to pick a number or if you have none, you can incorporate different ways, I guess, to pick if you don't want to use the dice per se. I will show you what each one of them are and then we're going to play around. Sound fair? Are we all rested up? Okay. So airplane balance, we've already done. So we're gonna to try to hold it for 20 seconds and try to encourage using a non-dominant leg. Because as I said, we always, without even thinking instinctively, we pick our dominant leg. Hit the deck can mean various things. So again, this is gonna be on the ability of, of um, your kids. So hit the deck can be like this. Some kids, this is all they wanna do. Some kids will get right down, like belly to ground, hit the deck that way. But it says we continue that for 20 seconds. So if someone hit, get their belly, belly to the ground and back up and do that crossing up and down for 20 seconds, great. If some just more want to do more like a squat, that's okay too. Superman banana is, oh, I always start it wrong. Okay, Superman, can you see me okay? Krista, can you see me? I can see you on there. I'm okay. Okay. Superman is like so. So like a back extension. Banana is like this. Like you're making a banana shape. And then we really just go from Superman back to banana. Back to Superman. And that one's for 20 seconds as well. So that one tuckers us out and really works our core. Ragdoll. I made the mistake of asking. Um, my boys group the one day we were virtually playing this game of what they thought ragdoll meant. Don't ask, don't ask boys that question. <laughs> one kid was like, I know what that means. And he literally threw himself up and flunked himself onto his ottoman. And I was like, no, <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> so that is not ragdoll. Ragdoll really is just a stretch. So just hanging over from the hips, stretching out those hamstrings. Star jump, of course we know is a star jump and continuing that star jump for 20 seconds and a floor jack, I will show you. So it's like a jumping jack, but from the floor. So again, can you see me okay? Yes, okay. So you bring your, um, pull the tummy in, legs are just above the ground, arms are just above the ground and you make the same movement as a jumping jack, but from the floor, with just your limbs barely off so that you have to force your core to work. Holy smokes. Okay, do you guys wanna play? Now that we know what all the movements mean, are we ready to play? Okay, let's see what I got first. Oh my goodness. I rolled a six, right? Ah, floor jacks. If you don't like floor jacks, away, just do jumpy jacks. If you don't have the space or you don't want to, or whatever it is, if you want to participate just with jumpy jacks, that is awesome. I am going to try floor jacks. We're going to go for, let's do 10 seconds. Three, two, one. Oh, I'm reaching for my dice again. A number four. Ragdoll. Yay! Stretch out those hamstrings. Let it all hang loose. Relax the neck down. 
We often keep touching our neck or shoulders. Let's just rig dog hair for 10 seconds. Slowly, slowly, slowly come up. Head is last to come up as I roll again. And number three is that Superman banana, right? If anything, if you don't want to do it, say Superman banana because it's fun. <laughs> Superman banana, right? Anyways, let's try that one. If you can, Superman banana, oh, at your own pace. If you're like me, you got no problem getting back to Superman, but to from Superman to banana is way more challenging. <sighs> okay, I'm gonna roll the dice again. Thank you to those participating. <sighs> oh, it's a five, star jumps. Let's do star jumps. <sighs> if you are sitting, even if you just want to do the arms, that works too. <sighs> okay, I'm gonna roll it one more time. Let's see what we get. Oh my goodness, it was almost a six and I was gonna roll again. It's a one, we're good. Let's go for that airplane balance. Let's try 10 seconds um, on each side. Three, two, one, other side. Hopefully you're not watching me because I'm not stable. And when you watch somebody not stable, it always throws off your own balance. Five, four, three, two, one. Come on down. Okay. So that is the fitness dice game. That one is a free downloadable resource on our website. And then if we go to the next slide, I'll quickly go over what the other ones mean, the movement dice. And then there is even a free print, like a printout one that's just blank. So um, you can create your own, you can have the kids input of what they wanna do. Um, even if you, and if you laminate it and use your dry erase marker, easy to wipe it off and you could change it as you go. Um, Movement dice, I'll just explain what they are to you. They're pretty self-explanatory, but in case they're not. Reach for the stars really is just coming on up and encouraging the kids to get up on their tiptoes and reaching up as high as they can. The dinosaur stomp is stomping their feet. And I always tell them you can either have, maybe you have little dinosaur arms or maybe you've got big scary dinosaur arms. They get to use their imagination. Blast off one is my favorite because they love doing it. And then I make them count down. We all count down together. Three, two, one, blast off. Walk the plank, which we already did in the other game. They want to swim like a fish, however they want. You can always encourage them to be sharks. That one always goes over very well. The get down, get up. Again, I usually just do this one as almost like squats. And I have the kids count with me to six. So I use the movement dice. Um, for preschool ages. Um, so from like that three to six age, you could probably, uh, that's why about it. And more than that, you're gonna go into that fitness dice or make up, make up your own um, as well. Because sometimes the kids are into, maybe they're really into climbing or something, right? Or anyways, they all kind of have their own thing. I'm getting hot, can you tell? Oh. Okay, any questions on fitness dice, movement dice? Those are also free on our website, uh, free downloadable resources, and they're just easy to print out. And then, then you have them and the kids love it. They, if they, especially if they all get a turn to roll the dice, it's like the greatest thing ever. So, okay, let's see, what else do we have? Mirror, mirror. I was hoping to play this one, but I don't know if we can, like if I can pair us up because we would all have to be able to show our screens. And so I don't know if we want to play this one. I will say, 
I will say this, Mirror Mirror is an awesome one for either a warm up or a cool down. So it's not like your main activity, that moderate to vigorous heart rate. This one is, um, I'll explain the game to you. You get the kids in pairs. One of them is the mirror master and the other one is the mirror image. So what one person does, the other one has to mirror. So they're standing face to face and it might be like, whoop, 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 whoop. And, they, and you know, they start doing this and then anyways, they all have to copy each other with whichever movements they think of. And then they switch roles of who is the master and who is the mirror image of it. Um, so this one is really good. The kids love this one for warm up or a cool down because it kind of gets their heart rates back down. If you're doing it for a cool down too, you can even say we really want to do like stretching movements or how do we make our bodies really big and try to get them to encourage them to stretch um, at the end of the day or at the end of an activity. Do we want to try to, because we can do this one virtually. Usually I would pair us up, but I think it'd be too hard. So those of you who want to play, I will be the mirror master first and then we'll see if anybody else wants to be the mirror master. Hmm? And if not, I'll make Krista do it. Hey, Krista, I can't believe I put you on the spot like that. Okay, um, I'm gonna stand. Let's stand for this one. And we'll see, hopefully you can see me. I know my, that light is in a very bad spot because it just looks like I'm glowing. Okay, are we ready? So, um, yeah, sorry, I realize I'm moving and you guys are my mirrors. So let's start with this. Good. Oh, I realize you can't see the top of me. Sorry, guys. Sorry, you can tell I'm a fitness instructor, hey? When I go right to the lunge, almost right away. Oh, you can't see my legs in front. Anyways, you get the idea. Krista, do you want to do some? Do you want to be the mirror master? Okay. Oh, you can't see your mouse, can you, to unmute yourself? That's okay. Does anybody else want to be the mirror master? Any takers? We will copy you. Oh, I see Janelle. You want to be the mirror master? Awesome. All right. We are following Janelle. She is checking our coordination. Look at that. <laughs> oh, that is good. I got it. Sorry. I was just going to say I was trying to do a warm up one, but I don't have very much space. <laughs> That's okay. That was wonderful. Thank you, Janelle. 
Okay. Anybody else want to take a turn? I love it. I love to see what people do. Anybody else? That really works on your creativity because I am the least creative. So I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> right? Well, it's so funny because yeah, the, you'll see the kids' brains working. They're going like, well, and then they go, I don't know. And then their partner goes, and they do the same thing. They go, I don't know. <laughs> so the more they play it, though, the more that um, they'll get better and they'll think of things. And all of a sudden they'll be like, oh, I'm next, I'm next. And then they want to go. So sometimes I'll, I, I usually do it mirror, mirror. But if they're having a hard time thinking of things, I'll often like, I'll start and we'll just do it as a whole group. Um, especially if there's, you know, like that eight to 10 kids, depending on how many kids you have. And we can kind of do it. And then they all kind of get their turn. Um, mirror, mirror, it's, not, it's such a basic game um but it can be so much fun so and it gets us moving in different ways because we all think differently we all have different movements that we prefer so it's really good to kind of get us out of our own bubble really that's a really good one too as an icebreaker so i've used that one as like that introduction warm-up kind of piece especially when you're just starting with a new group so yeah anybody have questions about mirror mirror it is a good one to use virtually too if you ever have to do any virtual games, which hopefully we don't have to do anymore. But if we ever had to, Mirror Mirror is a good one. All right, we will carry on. Oh, okay. So if anybody has, um, this is a free downloadable resource. So you know on Tarmac's um, like um, playgrounds, like the back of schools, and you will see um, the squares, like you all know how to do like the hopscotch, right? Like we all are familiar with that. There are games in here, so I highly recommend downloading this one if you have the tarmac and you see those um, squares, or if you have a cement pad and you have chalk, you can draw them out yourself and you can spend hours playing these games. So there's like a whole booklet just on move and play at recess, which can also just, it just means outside on a cement pad. Um, Krista, I was tricky and I, did you notice that that free downloadable resource is a click to a link to the resource? but you can't see your mouse. Oh, there's your mouse. Can we try to look at it? It's the magic. I don't know what, I could not see it in this whole presentation. I know, I don't know why it does that because it does that to me too. <laughs> oh, here we are, we so, did it. Okay. Can oh, it's not showing us, it's not showing us the link. Okay. Sorry. Nope, it's all good. Just so you, we can see what I'm talking about, but I realized we ran out of time. Okay, so then can you scroll to page seven for me, please? Can, yeah. Thank you. Okay, so these are the squares that I'm talking about. If you ever see those in a tarmac and you're like, what well, kind of a game? Like, that's a weird hopscotch. That's what I used to think. That's a weird hopscotch. Anyway, there are so many games to play within this. So in one of the, one of the squares, I call that like the royalty. Um, in here, they call it like the king square, but I'm also like, well, we can also have a queen square. So I just call it the royal square. Okay, so that's the person who starts. Um, so you have four players, if you have more than that, like four players at a time, but this can also be a very quick game. So the other kids can kind of just circle around or they can line up outside of each square. Um, what happens is that person in the, in the royalty box has a ball, they serve it, which just means they bounce it into another box. That person will catch and bounce it into another box and that catches. If the ball bounces twice, the person is out. And then that's when a new person comes in or if it, they don't catch it, they miss it that person is out and a new person comes in. So it can go very quick. Um, and what else about that game? Oh, when they get older, they no longer allowed to catch it. They just have to hit it. So more just like kind of work on a bit more volleyball or like that striking motion, then you can kind of get into that. So that's how you play four square in a very quick nutshell because I realize we're running out of time. Um, but that is another resource. There's lots of games. I was going to go through more, but I'm sorry, we play too many games. Sorry, Krista, now I make you get out of there again. But I want you to see what the squares were when I start to describe things, because or else you're like, I don't get it. Right? Do you want me to go back to the presentation? Yeah, if you don't mind, because I think I just have a few more things to go through. Of course. Thank you for being my pre presenter. Of course. OK. All right, then we'll go on. Oh, Frozen Statue, also like Freeze Dance. And kids love that one. So you can give them different locomotor skills, whether that's, you know, they really do get to free dance. Maybe it's walk, maybe it's jump, maybe it's bear walk, maybe it's be an elephant. 
Um, so be creative in how you want them to move. Uh, maybe it's we're all going to roll if you're outside and you, you can like roll in the grass um, and then when the music stops or when you just yell freeze they all have to freeze and here's where you can be creative too it can be a freeze here we say like your favorite superhero but maybe it's like freeze like an elephant freeze like a spaceship you know and you can do different things um that way so that one always goes over so well and i find that one's good for any age we don't outgrow that one okay we have one minute left does anybody have questions we were kind of zipping through these. Mm -hmm. um, can we see what was, what else did I have in here? Modifying activities. Yeah, this is awesome. So we can modify rule modifications. All of a sudden we're going, okay, we have one minute left. Or if you have not very many kids, you can make the boundaries smaller, right? Because nobody's scoring a goal. Let's also make the boundaries smaller. Maybe we got lots of kids. We need to make the boundaries bigger. What's some other ones? Equipment modifications is a good one too. Maybe we need a, a lighter ball. Maybe we need a bigger ball or a smaller ball. Doesn't even have to be a ball. Maybe the music needs to be louder. Um, trying to give demonstrations. So our teaching style type of demonstrations. Maybe we need to buddy up people, right? And say, okay, now let's show each other. Do we understand the game? Um, those are all kinds of ways to modify as well. We're gonna go back into cyberspace, I think, and get kicked out of here. <laughs> oh no. I've lost my mouse again. Did you lose your mouse? Yeah. Well, we, it says zero time remaining. Oh, that went fast. Does that feel fast? Oh, Does anybody have questions? I'm sorry, we would zoom through that. Oh no. Um, I'm just gonna put the link um, for all the resources in the chat before. Oh, perfect. I was just gonna ask you about that. I'll do this one and then I'll do the other one. Hopefully I have time and I'll put it in the main chat in case you can't uh, link to it. <laughs> sure. Do you want me to put just the, the general Be Fit for Life resource link in there too? Does that help? All right. We have the one that you sent. I just put it on. Because I page. sent you a whole list. Yeah, I made it so it was easy. It was just a one, put it on our website. So it's a PDF download now to all of them. Okay. <laughs>